Hello drawing students. Uh, today we're going to be working on your 18 by 24 inch good drawing paper. Remember we're not going to be working on your newsprint. Make sure you have your good drawing paper out and um, hopefully you can uh, place it vertically or on the floor or on a large sheet of, uh, or on a large table. And what we're going to be doing first is just kind of prepping uh, the paper uh, in order to do an assignment or an exercise about shape, volume, and tone. Um, so we're going to have to do uh, quite a bit of prep work before we actually start the forming and the shaping. Um, so materials that you're going to need to do that is your uh, vine uh, charcoal. So hopefully you have some of that. Um, this is just a willow vine charcoal. Um, you can have any type of vine charcoal uh, that you might have bought. Uh, and uh, everybody should have this from your drawing one class, of course. And of course, remember, vine charcoal is just a light, thin, very brittle, very uh, delicate uh, piece of long stick charcoal. Um, and it's not for your darks. This is for your gray tones. And we're also going to use it to be able to prep the paper so we can actually put darker charcoal on it. It helps charcoal move when you put a layer of vine charcoal on top of that. It almost acts like a, uh, like a lubricant of some sort. Uh, you'll also need um, your regular compressed charcoal, which should look like uh, these square bricks of compressed um, um, soft charcoal and they have various hardnesses so uh, try to just use the softest one that you can. Uh, we're also going to be talking about frequency and um, uh, texture uh, while we're doing this so uh, your soft one and maybe your medium would work as well um, so um, or use any one that works okay but softer will be the better. You're also going to need your uh, kneaded eraser okay and you remember your kneaded eraser will eventually look like a a piece of putty or a piece of clay that we're going to just continuously model and stretch as we're using. That's how you clean a kneaded eraser. And this eraser is more so for drawing and sculpting or shaping uh, the image. So um, it's not necessarily just an eraser, it's a drawing tool. We use it to carve out negative space. And that's what we're going to be doing today is carving out light um, in a shape, a large shape to provide volume and, and tonal range. So it's the opposite of what uh, I think a lot of people do with drawing when you add material onto a sheet of paper. We're gonna be actually subtracting charcoal or, or, or subtracting light. So we're doing the opposite. Instead of adding our tones, we're subtracting uh, charcoal. So the first thing that we're going to do is uh, grab our vine charcoal. And um, we're going to be using our vine charcoal in the proper way. Remember with that uh, stick of vine charcoal, you need to definitely hold on, hold on to it, you know, like you would a, um, um, almost like a, uh, like this with that kind of pinching form. Okay. Almost like your, uh, sumi brush that we, we did a few assignments with. So, um, and the first thing you're going to do is just do a, a large, uh, what's called a cross hatching technique. And I'm going to go in a very, very kind of free, uh, movement here and you can see I'm just laying a, a, a just a simple very straight concentrating on my stroke here so I'm making sure that my lines are you know somewhat parallel to each other what we don't really want to do now is kind of do a a, um, a curve uh, uh, cross hatching which would be called a contour cross hatching just a regular nice as straight as you can cross hatching right and we're just laying it down laying down a um, a layer here so we can rub that in, create a nice gray tone throughout the whole sheet of paper um, that we can then layer a top, uh, on top of that some compressed charcoal and you'll see how it'll provide uh, more of a better surface for that compressed charcoal to move and we can blend this. What we're going to do is just completely blacken out this, this sheet of paper to completely velvet black. Now. Um, with that, uh, there's going to be some texture and some movement due to the application of the media, right, the charcoal. Um, so uh, it's going to, uh, it, we're going to talk about and try to provide a good texture or frequently, and that's why we're paying attention to our stroke right now. I'm not just arbitrarily just moving. I'm really trying to get that nice and even and, and, and somewhat of a parallel set of lines. I'm going to keep going here. Okay. all the way because uh, we want the frequency or the texture of the material to be consistent um, or at least to let the viewer know that it's not 
uh, an arbitrary activity that we're, that we're really trying to get something consistent with a frequency. And that means kind of the, the vibration of the application of material. And we're going to cross that in a, in a bit, and we're going to do that multiple times with, with multiple perpendicular uh, crossings of your medium to achieve a good darkness, a tone, but also, right, so we have a consistent frequency of line or texture within that dark uh, tone that we're going to be making with this complete square. I'm going to keep going here. Um, this assignment, you might need to put a piece of tape on the corner because we are going to be moving around this whole sheet of paper. You're also going to need uh, to know that you're going to get a lot of charcoal on your hand and a lot of charcoal probably on the ground. So, um, so make sure you, uh, you make sure you place something on the floor or something or just, you know, have a little broom so you can sweep up some charcoal. Okay, so that's step number one, right? Vine charcoal, a good frequency all the way around. Make sure you are lifting up your clips. And I don't know if you can see that corner here, but I'm going to go ahead and complete that corner just to add material. That's all we're doing. Okay, I'm going to continue on with uh, the same process except going at a diagonal and I've taped down my sheet of paper in order to achieve uh, some stability. Again, make sure you're going in as straight as a line as possible where you're using your shoulder, locking your wrist. And remember, the vine charcoal, is, it, it's not for the dark tone at all. There's, you can only make uh, vine charcoal so dark, so uh, it's not what it's for. Remember, it's not what we're doing with this. This is just a first layer, so then we can move some compressed charcoal on top of this. And you'll see how easier it is to move. You have to think about uh, the fact that we're using uh, different types of wood that are just processed differently from the paper to the charcoal. So the, um, the great tree is providing us a lot and you know has provided the artist everything they need to make any image that they want. Because you can make charcoal look like anything. Um, it is that material that of course in black and white, or what we call achromatic tones, which means the ranges of gradients and tones of blacks to whites, achromatic. Um, but with the, the properties of the achromatic tones that you can achieve with uh, charcoal, um, you, you can make anything. You can make it look photorealistic. Um, and um, I'll show some of those images at some point. Okay, I'm move these back. Now, after you achieve the good crisscross pattern, okay, and that's enough for the vine charcoal. You're going to go through a stick or two to do this. Then I just want you to simply use your hand and in circles, just go ahead and rub that in real nicely. Now, don't worry if you're going to already, if you're going to get some, um, some lines maintaining in that rubbing. Remember, we want that. That's go always going to enhance the vibration of the image when you show the work. And that's the uh, aspect of building a drawing. Uh, that's the difference of building a drawing versus what um, a lot of people do in commercial art, which is kind of photo and paste or copy and paste and kind of redistribute pre-made imagery, which is fine. It's a form of collaging in a way. Um, but uh, in drawing, it's all about the process and how does that paper or that medium that we're drawing on or with, how can we, we, we reflect the process of that medium? And everybody knows that you can take a photograph of anything. So it's not really about uh, the, the um, representational quality. It's more about how that artist works with the medium and what that medium does with the material. 
that it's working with. So it's almost a, a relationship between process, material, and of course your imagination, statement, narrative, or content that you're trying to achieve with that, with those properties that the material can do. And you see how I've just rubbed down nicely, make sure you go everywhere, lifting the corners. for this step. Pretty simple, pretty fun, and you are going to uh, get some charcoal on your hands and you know that's where the that's where the war paint comes in. <laughs> okay. Now once you take a few steps back I want you to really look at this step here and to make sure that you're uh, liking what's happening with uh, with some of the textures and the tones that you're already being uh, it's already creating. Um, and if you don't, then you can always go back and fill in and rub. So in, for instance here, I have a um, kind of a, a lighter tone part that I'm going to go ahead and darken up because I want mine as consistent as possible, of course, with a frequency of, of, of my uh, line that's still showing throughout the, uh, the sheet of paper. So I want you to kind of step back and look at it and just observe those tones, you know, more so just, just to observe the... Uh, the steps and uh, some of the randomness that happens when you when you just use charcoal like this and just so uh, and just trying to blacken out a drawing. Now, once you're done with that, let's go ahead and switch to a a soft um, or medium. I want you to uh, grab a hold of um, maybe a, a kitchen knife or it can even be a piece of sandpaper. I got a box cutter here, and I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of sharpen up or or carve that corner down so I have a nice good flat. Uh, angle instead of starting off with something sharp like a corner because remember we're trying to use more tones and shadows and lines in this drawing This uh, assignment's more about shape. So I'm going to just trim You know kind of a corner off Right, so I, so I just have kind of a nice um, um Wedge of some sort uh, That I could use to make a bolder line instead of a nice sharp line. So I don't know if you can see that um, Hopefully the camera will focus on it um, but I do have just a nice wedge cut in that square. Uh, or you can just kind of rub it on a sheet of paper just to carve down a square. But I'm going to do the same exact thing, right? And just to make sure that we're cross-hatching, so I've gone 45, 45. I'm going to go ahead and start this one in opposite direction. So I'm going up and down instead of side to side or instead of at, an, at a 45 degree angle that I was doing with the earlier vine charcoal. And of course, remember, you're trying to make those lines as parallel as possible. Make sure you've carved or rubbed. So you see how bold that line is? I'm not doing a clean line like that. Okay, I don't know if you can see that, but that right there will be hard to rub down a thin line. Okay, more so a nice, good, bold line. We don't want to turn your block to the side um, because we're going to need to use that material. That'll waste a lot of material or it'll misshape in that rectangle that your compressed charcoal comes in. Because the reason why it's a rectangle and squarish is because so while you're drawing, you can carve different angles into it and use those varieties of line. So don't turn to the side. Just go ahead and like I did, carve that angle. And after I've completed my up and down motion with my compressed charcoal, I've lifted right my clips, removed my tape so I can go underneath. And I really want you to go all the way down, okay, to make sure you're getting it all the way to the edge. And I'm going to repeat that process, but just go horizontally, side to side, same thing. No rubbing in between. Let's do a uh, crosshatch first before we rub that in and get that dark tone. So observe the tonal ranges as you're going. Um, these can be just interesting drawings in themselves. Um, and there can be some good ideas from some environment for uh, some drawings, maybe with a darker background. Um, or any type of um, you know imagery you want to make so uh, Sometimes, you know if you're doing kind of digital imagery you can do simple things like this on big sheets of paper crop a nice photograph of it 
use it as a JPEG on Photoshop or Illustrator as a nice background that you can layer some graphic images on top. So, you know, um, even though we have a lot of apps that can do things like that, it's not going to look as effective or as complex as an actual uh, drawing. So, you know, always pay attention to the midpoints of processes because a lot of ideas and forms can be lost or can be, I'm sorry, found in that, uh, in these steps. Right now I'm bending my knees, making sure I'm even and perpendicular. My, so I'm not putting too much stress on my elbow and my shoulder. And make sure you breathe. Now I'm going on to my next step, uh, which I'm simply just going to rub that in, same as the last step. Trying to get that nice dark tone. Now this uh, rubbing here is going to take a little bit more time because you know you want to really work that charcoal into that paper. Now again, this is only going to really work well if you use uh, some decent paper, good, you know, good quality drawing paper. Um, so your newsprint, it could work, but um, you're going to see when we start erasing to take out light, um, or I'm sorry, to add light to it, you know, carving out light, we need a good paper with a good tooth to it, a good strong paper. Here's a little closer look here of just some steps of the process, slowly working my way down. They sell, um, a chamois type material, kind of a faux leather that um, is used for actually rubbing in charcoal and medium. So if your hand gets a little, you know, tired or um, go ahead and maybe just use like a piece of paper towel or something and maybe that'll help you move it. But the reason why we're getting such a nice consistency and you can see how I'm talking, uh, what I'm talking about, the frequency and the texture of the cross hatching underneath, how that creates an interesting weaving or or some depth and dimension. So pay attention to that. And like I said, that's why I really want you to pay attention to those strokes. So we achieve a good consistent uh, texture pattern of tones that um, again, creates depths and whole other, other worlds to, um, to experience and work with. So after you've gotten that third layer, which would be your compressed charcoal layer, um, what I want you to do is go back to your vine charcoal, and I've zoomed in a bit so you can see from the top here, so you can see how, again, I have some nice tones already, some, some different kind of line variation. Um, you know, I want you to keep some of that. Um, uh, let's try not to go completely black. Um, if that tends to happen with, uh, with some of the use, go right ahead. But um, let's say that uh, it's not turning out just a stark black square, uh, pay attention to the line quality because there's some depth that we can use. Um, so last step, I want you to go back to your vine charcoal, okay, and do the same thing. So I'm going to crisscross again, and, and that's uh, going to uh, basically just kind of throw in some extra small particles of charcoal into those areas that are just a lighter tone. So I'm doing a more looser kind of cross hatching. Now, I don't know if you can see that on the screen, but it is getting a little bit more of a even tone. So I'm gonna do that, right? All the way, just like so. I already have a lot of charcoal on there, but remember that vine charcoal does help that compressed charcoal move. Okay, now after you do a layer of that, okay, I want you to rub that in again. And with that extra layer of vine charcoal on top of that compressed charcoal, we should get a nice, more even tone, which still, as you can see, some fainted texture, depth, frequency, because uh, that's what we want in a lot of types of um, interesting drawing, especially with charcoal work, is some sort of uh, material or hand of the artist. If this was just a Just finishing out the bottom here real fast. 
Again, I've added one extra just thin diagonal layer of a uh, vine charcoal on top of that third layer of compressed charcoal, finishing it out. So here is the finished part of this step. I got my um, tone and my complete blackout of the sheet of paper. Uh, notice the again the uh, mark making and the cross hatching and you know I'm, I'm enjoying what I have here I want you just to again look at this because it's not just a complete abstract um, or it's not just a complete uh, blank tone there's a lot going on in here and there's a lot of random shades and tones so after you're done take a notice and then we'll go ahead and move on to the second part of the demonstration What you're going to need is you're going to need your 18 inch ruler or any type of straight edge that you have, preferably a metal one with the cork back. The reason why is because these are good to hold like this, almost like a knife edge, 45 degree angle, and you can do your lines um, that we're going to be doing. Uh, you're going to need a, a either your white charcoal pencil that might be in your drawing kit um, or a white Prismacolor colored pencil. It could even be a white crayon. Okay, um, if you don't have white, maybe you do have yellow or just something very contrasting from the, the black of the paper, um, but uh, not something too crazy. Um, and it's just a guideline anyway, so something real, real thin, but white would be the best. Um, last thing, it's just a nice piece of chalk if you have some somewhere that you can then sharpen into like a wedge like I did. Okay, um, and then what we're going to do, uh, you saw the diagram uh, at the beginning of this second section about the two types of composition that we're going to be working with today, which is going to be uh, symmetrical and formal balance. Um, and remember, those diagrams are just simplified diagrams uh, just to show uh, easy weight ratio from each side. But those are the two compositions that I want you to think about. And what we're going to be doing today is, is, is building a set of uh, a construction that you're going to develop yourself. Okay, and I'm going to do a demonstration to show you how I would approach it. Um, we're going to do a construction that's going to involve both uh, geometrical shape and organic shape okay and we're going to just build it uh, uh, you know abstractly and and with that process see what happens and what manifests within that building of abstraction we're also going to after we do a drawing and after a sketch with your white uh, medium and your straight edge uh, we're going to use the kneaded eraser okay to start to take off tones so we can play with that abstraction with various tones and uh, shades to, to hopefully develop a composition that is symmetrical or informal, right? I'm sorry, formal, um, and to play with the ranges of tones, right? And remember, we're dealing with achromatic tones, which is just the tonal ranges within the blacks and whites, and that's why the uh, needed eraser is here, so we can take away. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to start off with the bottom ground. Um, and that's what it would be called in any type of drawing is the horizon line or whatever would be the ground of the piece. So sometimes that's just a good way to start. Uh, and you can be very accurate. Like I can sit here and I can measure uh, three inches on one side, three inches on the other side, right? So I can have a nice uh, a parallel line from the bottom sheet of the paper. Hey, if you want, now remember, it is just... Uh, charcoal so you don't like that you can rub it away um, and this is a part uh, going to be the challenge of a drawing like this is that uh, more and more I'm going to be letting go of some of the parameters of what you create we're still going to be uh, specific mediums that I want you to work with but uh, you're going to have to start to develop your own imagery within these systems or these uh, um, techniques that I'm showing you so um, what I'm doing here, you can definitely follow, but hopefully you can you can go into your own type of uh, composition or your own ideas or something else will develop. So like I said, we're dealing with a, a, a symmetrical composition and formal balance composition, which is simply put equal parts on each side, you know. And again, there's a lot of loose uh, interpretations of that. Follow the uh, follow the uh, the concept, but again allow yourself to express yourself freely and go with the flow that's what's more important so uh, what I'm going to do here since we're dealing with sy uh, symmetrical balance and symmetry I'm going to measure that width and I'm going to find the midpoint of that which is nine I have an 18 inch sheet of paper so I'm going to put nine in that point 
and we do the same thing up here. Again, I'm doing this because I like to split the sheet of paper, right, formally, so I can already get the sense of what I'm going to be dealing with with this symmetrical composition. You can do that from, you can split it top or bottom, you can uh, turn this into a grid of some sort, but again, as long as you're within the parameters of those equal sides with that formal balance. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and go all the way down, right, and just begin to look. Now what else could I do with something like this? Okay, well maybe I can split this as well. So I can continue on with segmenting, you know, uh, this sheet of paper or this 18 by 24 rectangle. Nine inches from the center, so half a nine would be four and a half. Up here, half a nine would be four and a half. So again, remember, I'm really just, you know, mapping out some equal parts of the paper. Doesn't have to be perfect. It can definitely uh, be off a little bit. Uh, but then again, it just depends how, how you work and, and what develops from your own personal kind of experience working with this technique. Okay. But you're definitely going to want a straight edge and that's going to really help you uh, swiftly go through this process. So here I have a ground here that I can consider a, uh, you know, a floor of some sort. I have some lines and again, I want you really just to, to have fun and experience kind of focusing on symmetry. Okay, equal parts on both sides. Okay, so now what, now what I can do, well, let me see. Maybe I can uh, find half point of the length here. So this is a 24 inch length sheet of paper. Right, so half of 24 is going to be 12 inches. So I got 12 there, and I'm gonna put 12 down here. So I can go ahead and split this in half. And playing with this type of, you know, uh, intuitive geometry is, is pretty powerful. Uh, things can kind of uh, happen uh, with that. You know, you can develop your own designs, um, or just uh, using simple math like this with visual art, you never know what can pop up in the mind and, and, and what it could uh, uh, inspire uh, imagery-wise or whatever. Um, so you can see how I've simply done something first. You could definitely do angles. You can do 45 degree angles. Um, you know, you can do smaller sets of cubes. But more importantly, you just saw me just break down compositionally with rectangles and, sh and a straight edge you know, uh, uh, a simple symmetrical composition. Now, what can I do next? I guess that's kind of what the, the question would be in your mind is like, okay, what I do go from here? So I'm gonna go ahead and start adding some 45 degree angles in there because I don't want everything just a right angle. And that's just me personally. So uh, what can I do? Well, I've got midpoint here, midpoint here. Let me go ahead and connect those two here. Maybe if I get some sort of a um, pyramidal shape of some sort, right? Maybe something could happen within that form. Triangle. Maybe there's a design that you find. Maybe you can go into your sketchbook, into your past doodles, and find uh, something that, that uh, you've designed in the past that could work for this. Maybe there's a symbol of some sort. But one thing I want you to try to do is make up your own uh, symbol. So, Maybe you can use an existing symbol as a guide, but try your best to um, to come up with something. Now, here I have something that I, I just thought of, like instead of going all the way down to make an equal diamond, then what happens when I move that bottom angle to that point there? Kind of compresses that diamond a little bit. Gives it a different structure. And again, I just thought of that just because, you know, it just popped in my mind because I was actively doing it. And that will happen to you. So do not be intimidated uh, by that process or by what we're doing. Okay, now I have a set of geometry here. I have a set of right angles. I have a few 45 degree angles. I've split up, still maintaining the uh, symmetrical geometry. Now let's start adding some organic or some curved lines to it. Um, and again, this is really up to you on where you want to add it. Again, we're working symmetrical. So what you do on this side, you know, try to repeat it on that side as much as you can. Um, so uh, you can do kind of cool little tricks by 
using you know rolls of tape right that have nice curves jars um, other types of curved forms to trace over whatever you got or just freehand it I'm just gonna freehand it um, so let me add a curve somewhere start to connect some geometry so let's see hmm I like to be pretty precise with things so I'm gonna measure this point here to that point down there that's six inches so I'm gonna make a a th uh, right at three, right at midpoint, I'm going to make a mark. Same thing over here because remember we're, work we're working symmetrically, so I'm gonna do the same thing on that side and make a faint line there so it can guide me. Make a curve there. Same thing on this side. See how I have I made that line down at the bottom to guide me. Same thing here. Little freehand work. All right, we have something interesting. Okay, same thing. Let me so you see how I'm starting to develop this composition that is symmetrical, right? Let me zoom in just a bit. Composition that is symmetrical, containing both geometry and organic curved form. Now this is only two curved forms. I could use any curved form, but remember, try to make it symmetrical. So if you get too complex on one side, you might, be, you might not be able to achieve that same symmetricality on this side. So you have to work within a little bit more of, a, of, of diameters or parameters that you can achieve that symmetry. Okay, I'm gonna think about something else here. Hmm, what can I do? Well, let's add an organic form down here. Let's see what happens, right? So I'm gonna measure this again. I'm gonna find midpoint from this point to that point. And that's what's great about doing assignments like this or projects like this is that there's no, there's nothing telling you what's right or wrong. Eventually you will develop some sort of image. Okay, I don't know if you can see that, but I got my white mark there. Let me see if I go ahead and do a curved line. Okay, I got six inches there. So that is a 12 inch space from there to there. Let me do 12 inches over here as well. So that would be six inches right there, midpoint between half same thing over here, six inches. Okay, let me go ahead and do a guideline between those points there. Okay, right there, and I can go ahead and maybe mimic something like I've done up here, down here, okay. So I'm gonna start here, go down there. And you see how, remember how we held on to some of your other material? That's the same thing you want to do is hold on to that medium this way so you can have that nice wrist make that nice curvature. Okay, here, so I'm at the top here of my drawing and just want to show you a quick trick because I'm pretty much done here. I'll do a zoom out full shot in a bit, but um, Let's say you want to do some detail work on any type of drawing and you don't want to, you know, continuously, you know, rub your hand full of material up, uh, get a nice stick or something, something from outside. I have a nice piece of wood here so I can lean my palm on, place that where it needs to be and I can go ahead and finish what I'm doing here. So let me finish these eyes. Again, I want this to look. So here I'm just freehanding a little bit, and you know, it's your, it's your drawing. You have some license to do some freehanding, but remember, organic form and geometry. Those are the things, the two parameters that you have. And again, don't make it too complicated for yourself because symmetry is hard to achieve when, when it's overworked or overtly complicated. Okay, here is the final drawing, a uh, use of a white line over the charcoal. And you can see how, you know, you know, I came off with a pretty cool guy with the, with the face, uh, you know, I'm keeping these kind of clown teardrops here, you know, big, a big mouth here. And I rounded, used those same curved font, uh, lines at the bottom here, just to make a, you know, a simple neck and a shoulder on both sides. And again, remember symmetry, have fun with it. Um, use the straight edge and let's see what uh, what you come up with you know this is a, a a good simple design here that now i can go in and get some tones and shadows using my eraser 
Okay, after you've finished your line drawing, uh, let's go ahead and get out your gummy racer. Okay, and what your gummy racer is going to do is we're going to start to take off some material to start to play with some gray tones and dark tones. I want you to go ahead and have your charcoal uh, next to you. Okay, your vine and your uh, compressed charcoal. Uh, in order to add more darks and add more blacks, so not only are we, are we erasing away, we're also adding more more charcoal in order to con to try to get some tones and some contrast. And again, this is the is very similar to the first part of the demonstration where you're just using your imagination, going with the flow, and trying your best to envision how to use your tones for your design. Um, so I'm going to start off simply here in the face or eye area of my design and start to push things back and just to separate. Again, there's really no specific uh, technique to it other than using contrast and also using those tonal values and making sure that you have the range of tonal values such as the one, the diagrams that you uh, saw in the PowerPoint presentation. Uh, and again, it, uh, how do you begin is just by starting, choosing a shape, okay, like this curved triangle here right and seeing what happens when I start to take off some material. Now you see how I've wedged my gummy eraser into kind of a knife edge and that's what you're going to be doing is shaping that eraser so it can uh, provide you a good edge or a good line. And that's exactly what we need to pay attention to is the edge and the shapes right of these forms that we're going to be trying to play with here. You always want to make sure you also try to make sure the surface of that area that you are erasing has a good frequency just like we did with the charcoal work in the beginning. So I'm going to just again go all the way to the end. You see I'm continuously moving and wedging my kneaded eraser to replenish its ability to take off that charcoal. I can go ahead and use my pinky to add more material if I feel that I took off too much and really just try your best to even out that tone. Do some more work on the inside, rub it down again and just repeat. So there's a lot of kind of small little techniques and tricks you'll learn while you are uh, doing this assignment. Again, remember, uh, go with the flow. Uh, and what that means is starting somewhere, doesn't matter take some away, try a gray tone, try a medium gray tone, or whatever gray tone that you like, and then move to another shape. Um, you can separate by starting a shape here, taking some material off of a shape there, and just seeing what happens. It's very forgivable material, so you can always add more charcoal, right, to, to, uh, to, to con and then continue on. Um, I do want you to continuously try your best to maintain those shapes. So you see how I'm adding more charcoal around that edge so I can maintain that edge. So that's very important, right? Whether it's divine charcoal or your compressed charcoal. Remember, we're dealing with shape, symmetry, composition, and tonal value. You can always add more vine charcoal in some of, like in this area, if that's too light, do a little rub down just to add material. Remember, you're not coloring in the lines, you're just adding material so then you can use your finger to disperse that charcoal around. So that's why these charcoal pieces are very raw. They're just almost, they're just so you can apply material and then move it around with other types of tools such as your hands. And you can see I got a nice medium gray tone there. Okay, now let me continue on. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, you know, move on to this shape here. I want some contrast here, so that's going to stay there. I can darken that later on, but let me go ahead and add some darks there. Okay, since I did some erasing, why not? So I'm going to grab my compressed charcoal, and I'm going to make that completely dark, just to see what happens. No white of the paper showing at all. Again, you're just adding material, so then you can disperse it with your finger. OK, 
Okay, go back to my eraser here, right? And let's do some cleanup around my eye there because I want that eye to be clean and shape nicely. You can always go back to your white pencil to clean that up as well. So for instance, let me grab, I'm gonna grab a piece of chalk. That should be just fine. Keep that outline where I want it. So, you know, you can you get the picture here where it's going to be a back and forth of sculpting that edge, you know, adding more charcoal, whatever I need to do in order to achieve what I envision or, or what just arrives through the process of working with this type of geometry, tones, and of course, charcoal material. So you see how I clean that up pretty nicely and I'm getting some nice separation here, right? Um, okay, let me just do one more here. I'm gonna try another tone up here. Okay, so I'm gonna get my eraser out again, separate this top area. And one nice trick you can do is you can, I don't know if you can see here, but what I've done, what I've done is I've kind of rubbed um, charcoal on the surface there of my kneaded eraser. And that can be used to apply charcoal as well. So you can like round out your, like ball up on the palm of your hand, um, your kneaded eraser, and then make a bolder shaded mark there. And you can see how I'm accumulating an amount of um, charcoal on the end of my kneaded eraser, which almost makes like a faded light tone gray shade. If I had a clean sheet of paper, I could actually uh, write with that, or, or I'm sorry, draw with that. So uh, sometimes you don't need to knead your eraser or move it around. You see how that just creates a nice tone because I have an amount of charcoal on my kneaded eraser as well. So I'm kind of taking stuff off and putting it on at the same time. Let me move back to my charcoal up here so I can make sure I maintain this form at the top. It's an important focal point of the composition. So when things start to disappear, begin to add it back to it. As you can see now, I am starting to do some uh, gradient fading um, in certain areas just because, you know, I think that'll give it some interesting uh, depth and, and of course, some, some sort of curve. Um, so as you go, uh, you're going to start playing around uh, with that. You can see that I really uh, whiten or brighten up the eyes. I, I got out my plastic eraser. So if you do have your plastic eraser, start to get that out for some real light, light uh, tones. I'm gonna do another fade from this point here. See if I can do another gradient tone. Again, it really is uh, just softening that pressure as I go. It really is just an intuitive exercise and just to see what, what happens. And, um, but that doesn't mean that you're not thinking. That doesn't mean that you're not designing because uh, that's a, it's a very natural way of working. <laughs> and 
and even some of the tonal ranges and the shapes can be done with the with the shadows and tones so you see how here I'm curving there I'm gonna do the same thing over there because I like that you know because um, I did some of that here and here and just simple decisions like for instance I I, I I have a gradient of dark tones coming from here down to that eye if I do the same thing here but see how I create a separation between those two shapes there um, you know uh, that really helps you know so it goes transition from dark to dark light to light and uh, so sometimes that's just it's just the best way to uh, to to make some decisions is you know go ahead and proceed on with taking some material off and something will appear that will be a good idea again working symmetrically side side So I've grabbed my white eraser and I've been doing a lot more shaping with it and just finding, you know, form and kind of the curves and the swirls. I've also grabbed my charcoal pencil. So if you have one of those, uh, uh, that can be really good to use to, to um, kind of get some fine work here. Um, you can see how uh, with the white eraser, I've, it, it's really useful to make shapes. So I'm going to try another kind of shape right here and see what happens. You can see how the white eraser is a lot more aggressive and it will take a lot of material off and 
you know. And we can come in either with our charcoal pencil or if you can shape in your, start to clean things up a bit and find some nice edges to define. So after you get some things um, figured out and some decisions made, start to uh, define these edges a little bit more. And of course you can go as far, you know, as you want with it. These can get pretty complicated and hopefully you'll get lost into, you know, that zone and, and um, something where you immerse pretty interestingly. See how I softened that contrast. I like that a little bit better. Here is my finished drawing. I do really hope that you all had a good time working with tones, symmetry, value, gradients, uh, doing some subtractive processes of removing material, almost like carving. Um, and as you can see how mine turned into kind of an interesting mask form and I had a lot of fun, you know, uh, you know getting some of the gradients kind of matching up almost like a checkerboard, but then within that, um, you know, you have these really glowing eyes and, and, and you can go in with your white chalk or your white colored pencil or something to even get things wider and brighter. We'll be doing some of that later on. Uh, but again, you know, you get some nice contrast with just your plastic white eraser. Um, I kind of put in a, a, you know, some, some spookiness to it with the snake's tongue here, you know, since it's Halloween, I guess that's was in the ether. I really do enjoy uh, this uh, top part here uh, with the horns and the silhouette almost like a, a head behind the mask. Just a slight little uh, information of uh, that there is somebody back there. I think it's I think it all worked out. The lines in the back are they're just really just loosely erased down. There's really nothing to it uh, and it's effective because remember um, it doesn't have to be perfect as long as you have a consistency of, of um, movement and technique it will look intentional and it will look good because uh you know that's pattern that's rhythm it's just a consistency and it'll happen uh down here all i had to do was round out the edges here to get some shoulders and a neckline and and i have a portrait of a, a pretty cool a pretty cool person here in an interesting mask um let's do some zoom in here just to see some detail um and again i hope that um you can really kind of tap into that creative uh, flow with geometry and um, 
shadows and tones. And I think uh, the subtractive process is easier than you think. Uh, when I do this in drawing one, we do a kind of a still life approach to it. Um, it's always easier. So carving sometimes is the best way to go for certain types of uh, imagery. Um, so I hope you had fun. Remember, try to get as symmetrical as possible, clean as possible, uh, and more importantly, you know, uh, let your mind follow the process and let your imagination be guided through the process. I think that's the biggest trick to doing creative drawing or advanced level drawing is finding your own um, voice. And that is not just content and narrative. Your voice is the consistency of shape and then the consistency of the type of colors you use and the type of mark that you make. So remember, there's no right or wrong. The only wrong there is is the non-attempt and, and not attempting to your fullest potential or to your best ability at, at the moment. So uh, again, I hope everybody had fun. I hope everybody's having a, a good time with their art projects. And I look forward to seeing uh, your outcomes. Thank you.